Welcome to Crystal Diffract 7. In this tutorial, we'll explore how you can get more out of your observed diffraction data, including removing backgrounds, measuring peaks, characterizing sample integrity, and performing phase ID. Now, when working with experimental data, it's best to start with an empty document and set up your experimental parameters before you import any data. Here I'm going to set up a conventional laboratory X-ray diffraction experiment using the diffraction menu to specify experiment type, constant wavelength X-rays, X-axis type, degrees to theta, and the wavelength. And I'm going to use copper K-alpha radiation, and it's monochromatic. Now, Crystal Diffract can read observed data from a text file, and the easiest format to use is a simple XY data file, such as this one here. It's a column of X values, which are in degrees to theta, and a column of Y values, which correspond to intensity. And we can simply drag and drop this into the diffraction pane for instant display. Now, before we do anything else, you might just want to auto scale the pattern by clicking the auto scale button in the toolbar. Next, we might want to adjust the display settings and we can use the display inspector to do this. Let's set the plot color and the display style. And I'm going to turn off these peak markers and just rely on using lines between points. We can also use this inspector to adjust the position and uh, an X offset or a Y offset to the uh, pattern. We'll come back to that. Now, if you have a noisy and uneven data set, such as this one, which corresponds to a scanned film, you can take advantage of automatic background detection and subtraction. Now, to do this, we need to ensure that the pattern is selected in the patterns list. And then we'll navigate to the simulate inspector and we're going to open up the background group. Now we have two options here and the easiest option is auto. And we'll come back to that, but there's also a manual option. Now manual backgrounds require one to add a series of control points to a Bezier curve, which can then be subtracted. So let's add a starting curve, which has two points. And to add additional points, we select the first point and we can add one or more anchor points. Let's add two to the curve. And the idea is that we can drag these anchor points to our observed data set. And each anchor point has a tangent and the tangent controls the curvature that point and so we can adjust those tangents. And let's add a little bit of a slope over here. I think we might need one more point. So let's select this data point and I'll click the plus button to add one more to the right of that. That's messed things up a bit. I should have started off with five data points, but never mind. You get the idea. And we're starting to get a curve, which uh, this is a sort of an eyeball fit, but for very difficult cases where you have a range of amorphous materials, such as this one, uh, this is capped on film superimposed over our sample because the sample was uh, going to be heated in a furnace. Um, sometimes this is actually better than auto detection. 
Anyway, this is our experimental uh, observed uh, background and I can click the subtract background curve button to remove that. So that was uh, an example of a manual background removal. Let's just remove our manual curve and let's have a look at auto background detection which is probably what you'll use most of the time. Simply choose the auto detect option and click calculate and when we finished we can opt to subtract the background curve. We might want to auto scale at this point. Once we have our cleaned up data set, we can compare it with ideal simulated diffraction patterns to assess sample integrity and purity. And we can take advantage of Crystal Diffract's integrated structures library to do this. Now I'm going to add reference patterns for two phases, the source material, uh, the zeolite anel seam and silicon, the latter being an internal standard. Now we can use the file, add to window submenu here, or we can use the add button in the sidebar. And let's add pattern from library. The library browser appears in list form and we could browse all these phases quite happily and explore all the different structures in the library, um, but it's actually faster to search. So let's start typing anel seam and here it is. Now let's add silicon to the window. And here I can just type the chemical formula because the uh, little bar underneath the search field includes a formula match option. We now have three diffraction patterns visible, our cleaned up observed data and two reference patterns calculated from crystal structure data. Now a good way to compare these is to stack them and we can do this by choosing the view intensity stacked command or we could click a stack button in the toolbar. Now we can edit the offsets between the various patterns in the display inspector or we can revert to a collapsed state. Now I find the easiest way to compare peak position is actually in film mode which we can access via the view menu. And here we have three simulated film strips corresponding to our three diffraction patterns. Now I'm going to rearrange my patterns so the observed pattern is in the middle. So I'm going to select that pattern and drag it between the two reference patterns. And we can now zoom and scroll between the various ranges to compare the positions of observed peaks and we should be looking at silicon which is the internal reference and comparing that to our observed lines. You can see the lines match up quite nicely for the uh, anel seam and silicon. There's a slight offset and uh, ideally the silicon lines would match up exactly. And what we can do here is to look at this difference between the observed and simulated patterns. We can go to the display inspector for our selected pattern, the observed profile, and we can adjust an X offset or the zero shift so that this pattern is calibrated against the internal silicon standard. Now we can use the cursor tool to measure our peak positions precisely. I notice that here in film mode, the intensity of each pattern is shown in the film caption in the top right hand corner of each film strip. Let's switch back to graph mode. 
and I'm going to hide the simulated patterns and we'll focus on our observed data set. Now we have the option of letting the program measure our observed peak positions automatically. And we can do this by opening up the reflections list. I find this works best for observed data in a vertical layout and we can click the rotate button here to switch to a vertical layout. Let's hide our inspector and let's just resize that list so we can see more. We can double click each row in the list to show the corresponding peak position. We can also get the program to label these peaks. And to do this, we can go back to our display inspector and we can turn on peak labels and we can configure the peak labels. Uh, we can configure uh, the text display. We can show D spacings and we can configure the position of the labels. Let's put them at the top of the plot. And now if we auto scale, we can see the peak positions that the program has found for us neatly labeled. Now we can customize how many of these peaks should be found as part of the automatic search. And we can do that by going to the search button in the top right and specifying a maximum number of peaks and also a minimum intensity threshold. Now, if we had an unknown material, we could use these peak positions to identify the material using the phase ID feature. Note that we might want to remove any peaks that correspond to other phases, such as our silicon reference peaks. And the easiest way to do this would be to uncheck the use checkboxes that can be found in the peaks list. An alternative option would be to use the ruler overlay to delete a range of points around each unwanted peak. Anyway, to use the phase ID option is very simple. We just click on the phases tab and the program will use its integrated diffraction database of some half a million patterns to identify the material. Now, this was a very simple match. In more complex cases, we'll get an extended list of candidate phases. Uh, we can select an entry here and you can see that in red, we have the strongest peaks for that pattern superimposed above our observed pattern. And if we click the little info button here, we get a little bit more information about that pattern. There is the option, if you have the internet, of loading the simulated pattern from the COD, the Crystallography Online Database. And that allows us to get a more comprehensive comparison between our observed and ideal diffraction patterns. So that's an introduction to working with observed diffraction data in Crystal Diffract 7 is designed as a quick and easy experimental workbench.